Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 4. This is one of the strangest episodes I've ever seen in the series. And I think there might have been a cameraman who was ill that day. We have very few pictures from the event. This is a recap. You can find the whole episode on YouTube. Let's get started. And please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Many people who watch these don't subscribe, and I would be really thrilled if if you'd hit that button. All right, here we go. So they are at Chartwell Gardens in Kent. It's a very sunny day, so that's a positive. So we're gonna have lots of shapes and shadows. They have protection from the wind and rain and their little pods and an easel and a chair and usually some sort of bench or something to put their paints on. What they're actually looking at is, well, I'm gonna show you that in just a second. You could say it's nothing, but it's also basically what we think of when we think of landscape, which is hills and grass and, you know, basically countryside. There's no, there are some buildings in the distance, but there's nothing to actually anchor in the composition. So you're gonna to have to be creative and do that. Yeah, that's the view they have. I would, I would have a great time with this one, but, um, but the artists really struggled with this today, and, and I'm really not sure why, but, but maybe the why is gonna come up in just one second when we see what their entry pieces were. These are such varied artists and interpretations. So we'll take a look at the artists, we'll see them with their piece that they submitted to be on the program, and then we'll see the piece, then we'll get a little bit of a close-up of the actual piece. There's six artists all together, but only one will go on to the semifinals of this season. So here's our first one up. It's really kind of even hard to see, but it's a very stylized type of, I'm gonna do air quotes here, landscape? I don't know. We know the judges like something new, they like something different, and this is definitely that. It comes from the imagination. Pretty heavy on the pink there. Um, I don't think it has a lot of impact from far away, which I think is really important for a commission piece that's going to appear on a museum wall. But I don't know if that's a consideration the judges have or not. Here's a much more conventional landscape. We'll pull back in a second. What it is is it's a detail looking up the trunk of a tree. Um, Andrew Wyeth has a very famous sketch. I don't think he made it into a painting of this exact type of thing. So we've seen this kind of thing before, but it's, he, he does it very, very well. So, um, so he's very interested in detail, and I think he, I think he, I think this is really nicely done. It's also the most conventional that we've seen so far, perhaps the most conventional piece of the day. Here's the next one up. It's a very tiny painting. We really can't see it very well. We'll come in and, and have another look at it in a second. I think it might be a watercolor. I'm pretty sure because it's on paper. It's, it's very strange. It took me a while to figure out what it was. It's some kind of sort of fire going on on the right and a hooded figure in a chair that faces away from you on the left. So I'm sure it has all kinds of symbolism of some kind. I just don't like it as a painting at all. It's all about horizontals and not, uh, I'm just not finding any forms or patterns. Now this guy is all about forms and patterns. If anything, too much forms and patterns. It's, it's pretty chaotic. Um, but is a signature style, and he will do a piece that is very much in this style today. So he has a consistent style. So if you knew you wanted to get a painting from him, you, you would know kind of what to expect. It's not a wild card. And I think the judges are going to like this because, as they state, they don't want beautiful landscapes necessarily. They want something new. They want something different. They want new voices. So this is his entry piece. It has a, a lot of very dull color. I'm a colorist. I don't. I don't. I. I like. I like to play with um, temperature, um, cool and warm, and also with brightness and dullness. This. This doesn't do that. This is. This is all about forms, which I appreciate too. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Yeah, this is our last painter. Now this is a very, very excellent landscape of an urban city, um, with some countryside in the background. This would have taken a tremendous amount of time to do, and he doesn't have that kind of time today. He only has four hours, five if he paints through the lunchtime. But th that this painting took a lot more time than that. So he's gonna, we're gonna have to see how consistent can he be with his preferred style when there are time constraints. We'll find out today. And here comes our last painter, last of the six. Oh yes, I remember her. Yes, she's all about green. 
Green on green on green. It's a wall of green. This is a cautionary tale because if you do this, it kind of looks like you had a sketch and then you picked up a green filter of some kind and put it in front of your face and you're going to end up with that. It's, it's a wall of green. I would modulate that with some neutrals and perhaps some color spots of value, but that's not what she's about. So now the here are our finalists. We're going to have a closer look at them in just a second. And three of them will be selected to be in the semifinals of this episode, and only one will go forward to the semifinals of the season. And this is season, I think we're on season five, right? Yeah, season five. <laughs> I lose track. Um, Landscape Artist of the Year has much more varied contestants than, um, than the Portrait Artist Program has. We have more conventional painters in the Portrait Program. So that's either a plus or minus, depending on what you like. All right, here's the person who did that very, that watercolor with the figure and the fire. And this is what they did today. This, this looks like a sketch in a sketchbook for me. I don't know how this could win the final commission to be in a gallery. And I do think there was a camera person not there today because we didn't get any slices or pieces of the um, participants work, just the one shot. Here's the next one. This one I really like a lot better. You know, you can see how bright the color is here. It's got freshness. You know, that fresh green that happens in the springtime, you don't see it once it gets to be July. It has to be very early in the spring to get that kind of green. Here's one detail. We did get one detail on this painting, and you can see it's got a lot of generous paint on it. Um, they're not using a lot of black or white. And so everything's staying quite bright. Here's the next one. And like I said, this is, just, again, another wall of green. I guess that's what she does. Uh, here's the, this is the painter who did that um, urban landscape that I like so much. So he's done this with a lot of tiny, tiny detail, pointillism, really. I, I really like it. I like it a lot. But, um, but I don't know if the judges will. If I like it, they won't. This is the one that I like the most. This looked like the place. It has a sense of the place. And you've got that, those color spots of value of orange going on that break up that green. It makes a big difference compared to the painting that was just a wall of green. And this gives you a sense of distance. I don't know that we've seen that so far today. Here's a close-up of that with some figures in the front. Like I said, we have very few little slices of the canvas. So I don't know what happened that day. I think I just don't think they had the staff. And here's the last one. This looks very familiar, very similar to the piece that he did uh, for his entry piece, which doesn't give me a sense of the place they were at at all, but it shows consistency of style. So let's see what happens. Final judging begins, and the judges are going to pick three of these people to go on to the semifinals. And just to refresh our memories, we're going to take a look at the paintings they did in order to be selected onto the program. Um, let's see. So here's, the, oh, there they are. They're standing next to the pieces that they did today. And they're not holding up real well from far away. Hmm, interesting. This could be, this could be, I don't know. Well, I, I'm hemming and hawing here because I try to guess what the judges are going to do. And usually what I know for sure is they're not going to go for the painting that I like. But I don't think they selected any of the ones that I liked for the finals. But we're about to see. Yeah, this one, I know they're going to love this because it's weird and they like weird stuff. Um, but I, I, it, it's really disorganized for me. I, I, I don't enjoy this painting. Here's the next one. Yeah, this one doesn't have enough oomph. Come on, let's do some paint. Oh, the one I love. Okay, well, they're not going to pick this one because I thought this was the best painting of the day. <sighs> and I think this is a fellow that did that tree that I responded to as well. So... I already know, if I really like it, and I'm a fan, they're going to feel the opposite way. So I'm not going to let my heart be broken. I already know that's the case. And if you've watched these recaps, then it's going to be happening to you as well. But we're here for the art, and we're here to support all artists. Now let's take a look at what they did today. So our first one up is going to be... All right, the first one up, yeah, it's a guy I liked, yeah, with the tree and now this pretty colorful landscape. So, yeah, I want him to win, which you know that he won't. <sighs> Boy, that is frustrating as a, as a painter myself. I, I, uh, but 
We've talked about this before in different videos. If we're going to watch the program, we have to watch it as an entertainment, and this is just too conventional for these judges. Here's the next one up, very consistent in terms of style. I mean, you, you know right away that this is the same person painted both of them. Uh, it doesn't have a sense of place for me, but it sits comfortably in a place where this person has a personal style and they want to share it with us. So if that's your cup of tea, then you're going to really enjoy owning a piece by him. And the last one I just feel was, well, weird in terms of subject for sure, but that doesn't matter to me. What really matters to me is that it just doesn't have much oomph. It needs a lot more. You really need, there's this expression called charge the brush. You have to charge the brush, meaning you put a lot of paint on your brush. This is mostly attained by using water, which is kind of a mistake that some watercolorists make. In order to make the particular shade they want, they'll water a color down, but it ends up looking like a washed out pair of jeans. You know, when you put a pair of jeans in the um, washer the first time, they're really bright blue you know, the, the 200th time they're kind of washed out. This looks washed out to me, and that's it's the water effect going on here. Too much water in your mixes. There are the paintings, both the entry painting on the left and then the painting that they did today. I didn't find today to be a terribly inspiring day, um, and some episodes are like that. This is a very uneven season, though. Last season was just fantastic, but this one, I have to say, I'm, I'm losing enthusiasm for it, but I hope you don't, and I hope you keep watching. <laughs> so let's see who the winner is. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. yeah, I thought so. I thought so from the very beginning. It's weird. That's what they like. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join me next time. See you. Okay. Bye-bye.